Hello, and um, welcome back to. That's our lore videos, really, of um, the World of Saga that we're going to go through. Um, as I said in the other video the other day, just moved house, so you know, all big plans ahead. And uh, we're getting new stuff sorted out in the house, the internet and things, but until then, I thought it'd be good to go over. Um, some more of the things about the world that we didn't cover last time because we didn't really cover um, things like um, or guilds, assassins, uh, different things that are in the world. We, we covered all of the major powers, all of the major empires and the, and the major parts of, of history. We haven't really spoken about uh, any of the in-depth stuff. Uh, so we'll, we'll be going over stuff and but I figured for the first presentation after we've done like the, the central core themes of the world, I thought I was thinking about doing religion. That was going to be the one that I was going to actually go on and do. But I actually think uh, the Assassins will be a much a better place to start. Not just because uh, you know, the missus is playing one in the campaign. Well, because at the moment in the campaign, in the World of Saga 3, the uh, Assassins are playing quite a big role. Actually, for the first quarter of the campaign, as, as our characters really get into the the struggle, uh, they're going to be the struggles that they're going to be facing on the way through. So I figured I would um, go on about uh, assassins for a bit, just to give you guys a bit more of a, shall we say, well-versed understanding of what they are and how they operate and where they work and where they are. Um, so first of all. Um, <clears throat> we're going to look at uh, the different guilds and uh, different guilds and how they operate and, and um, who's a part of them. And as you can see here, they come in many different shapes and sizes in Saga. The uh, the assassins, you know, some of them are thugs, like this man from uh, from Shardland. Um, obviously, a pirate raider who is now being paid to kill people for a living um, somewhere in the world. Um, you know, the man you saw before was a, a Kaid Thorn agent who we're going to discuss in a minute. Uh, so so Assassin's Guild pretty much permeates Saga, you know, the, the, there's one in the west, there's a there's a major, there's two major ones in the west, there's two major ones in the east, three now I think, and there is also one in, uh, in Keldanian in the centre of the world and there aren't any in Shardland, uh, but the, there are assassins in Shardland who have gone to join different groups all the way around the world. Simply because this is a very violent world. You know, this is a world where life isn't—I wouldn't say it's cheap—but uh, you know, you can you can meet your end in some pretty violent ways in Saga. And powerful men and women always make enemies, and those enemies always want to strike back in some certain way. You know, assassins aren't cheap. But in this day and age in Saga, they are definitely um, a viable source of retribution, a viable source of moving your line forward, of moving your established family forward, or simply gaining revenge on somebody that thinks themselves beyond your reach. So, yeah. So, we're going to look at. Um, I'm just going to read it straight from the guide. How about that? What we have on assassins. So, assassination has always been a part of Western and Eastern cultures uh, since the first em empires drew breath and loathed those regions. In the East sits what is most likely the oldest guild of assassins in Saga, known as the Black Lotus. Uh, they have their headquarters in Shade City, in the farthest reaches of Manchai, in a place that is rife with poison bogs, and some of the most deadly plant and animal life known to humankind. It is at the City of Wonders at the end of the world that the Black Lotus makes its home within the Venom Catacombs that, sli that slide and slip beneath the surface of the city. They have so many entrances and exits that they are thought to be near impossible uh, a near a possible labyrinthine, labyrinthine network uh, to traverse that lead to the masked house 
which sits at the center of the of the web like a spider overlooking its hidden flock every single assassin of the black lotus is made to learn each entrance exit turn nook and cranny of the venom catacombs before the completion of their training black lotus assassins are taken from the, are taken from the street or, or you know uh, poor off families and taught their craft from an early age all serve a master of the masked house who rules the black lotus and is voted in uh, into power through the council of the six which is the administrative body of the organization i believe um at least in my head law that uh, saya's uh, character in uh, saya a character in our campaign her master is a member of the council of the six um it is a highly secretive and aloof sect of the shade city that controls much of it from the shadows and as much and as such, any attack on the city would be fruitless as the Black Lotus would simply slip away and begin anew elsewhere. Each Black Lotus assassin is trained obsessively in the use of all weapon types, however their main strength is, is actually their bodies themselves. They are incredibly adept at disarming others and using their weapons against them, as such, uh, and as such can uh, move unseen within entourages for weeks without attracting attention before making their move on the target. To contact the Black Lotus, a client must pay a visit to one of the many masked men in the, sh in the Shade City. They are taken to a secluded place and drugged before being taken to the mask masked house through secret entries in the Venom Catacombs whilst asleep. They are awoken and give their terms and targets to the assassins and are then put under, are then put under once more and return to their homes. Payment is given to the masked men within Shade City once the job is done, which means that the Black Lotus remains... Uh, most uh, most exclusive to Menchai to Menchai clients mostly. Um, they have been known to take on business from from abroad, however, for the right price, especially if the client uh, takes the time to come all the way to Shade City just to recruit them. So that is a, an Eastern sect of assassins in in the Black Lotus, uh, a deadly sect of assassins. Um, they come in on all shapes and sizes, uh, on shapes and sizes. But I think if you're going to look for a counterpart to the Black Lotus, I'd say their closest counterpart is well probably the Ninja. You know, just a second, I'm having a drink. Yeah, the most closest counterpart is probably the Ninja of medieval Japan. <clears throat> um, they're not straight ripped from that, but many of their characteristics do come from that. A ninjutsu style of um, ripping down your opponent with your bare hands. If you have nothing else to hand, you take their weapon and bludgeon them to death with it. Death with it, you know. Um, as we can see here on the picture, there there are some binding users who have become assassins. Uh, you know, and that is deadly. And these are, these are people who, you know, especially in Keldanian, if they are caught, they would be killed. They would not never. They wouldn't even be asked to surrender. They would just be killed on the spot by the Spire Church. Um, so yeah, that's the Black Lotus. Uh, probably the oldest uh, assassins group in Saga. I haven't really written down dates for when they were established. E each of these things, apart from the Kaid form. Um, because I think it's better to have, because they wouldn't want you to know. Let's be honest. You know, they wouldn't want the Black Lotus wouldn't want you to know when they were formed. They'd want you to think that they were always there. You know, in one way or another. So the next group we're going to talk about were actually in Keldanian. Um, you know, the Keldanians like to think themselves honourable and above things like this because they, they are it is the home of knights. In this world, but they're not. Um, the Kaid Thorn are, are ironically named after a famed Kildanian war hero by the name of Rovar Kaid Thorn, who founded their order in the year 1988 of the Age of Valen uh, as a unit to delve into occupied territory and shatter Valen Rethian supply lines and assassinate their leaders. So this this is coming at the time when uh, the the First Empire, the Valen Rethian Empire, as it was called before then is invading Keldanian to try and claim it as a province. Um, so it's before Sarpedon. Uh, the Kaidthorn Brotherhood, as it was known, was designed to keep the general populace safe from the ravages of the Silver Legion as it advanced through Keldanian, 
maneuvering their armies with the temptation of supplies away from populated centers and into the waiting jaws of the rebel Caldanian armies. Barely a century after this, however, the Kaidthorn Brotherhood had, had descended into a roaming band of cutthroats and robbers, taking jobs from anyone who would pay to eliminate ind individuals using the skills they had learned at the great Robar Kaidthorn's feet. Uh, the formation of the pa of the Pathfinders, which is another guild in uh, in in Caldanian. the formation of the Pathfinders, however, would put a halt on their progress as an outfit, as they were stalked and hounded by this new faction, and many of many of whose whose members were former Kaithorn agents who had walked away from the group with the changing of, of their remit. The Kaidthorn today are master assassins, however they are less aloof and glamorous than their eastern counterparts. Anyone with connections can become one of their number, and they have no compunction on taking more morally questionable contracts. They have become Caledanian's answer to, ass to assassins, guilds and other continents, however instead of, of only ever working alone, Kaidthorn assassins have been known to work in groups of up to ten strong, to stalk their bounties and share the pay off amongst themselves. No training, absolutely no training, is offered in, in the Kaidthorn. You bring your skills with you to the fold and take contracts from Kaidthorn sleeper agents and handlers of little import until you prove yourself trustworthy and talented in the art of killing and keeping, one, and keeping one's mouth firmly shut. The guard of the Kaidthorn is blood red and most live within the forest and secluded spots of Kildanian, keeping well away from the eyes of the path Pathfinders. A lot live in communities and don their colours when on the job. All value secrecy, and if a man or woman wanted to earn a living by killing, and still have uh, wanted to earn a living by killing, and still have the freedom and and choosing their own fate, it is to the kind form that they make contact. So yeah, the, the Pathfinders the, are are another group that we will cover another time. Uh, they are basically the policemen of Caledanian. Uh, they only operate there, and they guard the roads. Um, they are incredibly... They're, they're basically woodsmen who are incredible... They're rangers, basically. They are basically rangers, the Pathfinders. And uh, the Kaidthorn are older than the Pathfinders, and they are, are rangers who have basically let their powers be used for evil, if you want to call it that. Uh, and... And they are people who you know, go out and kill and murder for money. That's pretty much what the Kaidthorn are. Um, so that's that's Kaldanian's answer to assassins there. The newest major guild of assassins within Saga are known by the name of the Shadows of Kaelstown and have their home in the city of Kaelstown, which sits on the eastern coast of Valenreath. Uh, of the Valenreathian holdings in the west. So in the west, uh, you have Valenreath, obviously, the first, uh, the, the seat of the first empire as it was. And on the right uh, hand side of that, far to the right hand side, so you're looking out across the breaking seas towards Kaeldanian, is Kaelstown, which is named because there are a lot of Kaeldanian expats um, made their homes there. Um, when the great dragon Gwenflui uh, crossed the Breaking Seas after it destroyed Ventia in the 2624th year of the Shattered Age, it landed in the old city of Kaelstown, annihilating it and hurling its foundations into the sea before moving on to parts unknown to this day. A mysterious benefactor made his way across the sea on the dragon's tail, however, not literally, <laughs> and uh, in a boat, and proceeded to pour a vast amount of coin into the reconstruction of the city under his watchful eye with the seeming blessing of the Valenrethian Ministerial Council. Kaelstown arose once more to look eastward over the seas towards Kaeldanian, across the breaking seas. Trading agreements were, were struck as well as shipping protection guaranteed by the Darkwater Armada, uh, which, was, which was taken on as an exclusive mercenary fleet for the city. Within a few short years, the city of Kaelstown was booming as the most successful port on the eastern coast of Valenreath and held up as an example of the resourcefulness of Valenreathian ingenuity by the Nine Ministers. Uh, in the city's heart, however, was a secret most dark. 
The individual who had crossed the seas was in fact a master assassin, backed now by the Valenrethian government with a vast network of spies and informants. He built the city once more with his own money and his own image, and at, and at its heart was his new organisation of sophisticated killers, the Shadows. Every assassin of this guild is made a member strictly by invitation only, and must have a proven track record. Training, training is given to most who join, however the initiate, the initiate must have proven to be a reliable and resourceful spy for the, sh spy for the Shadows for, sh for some years before this. Uh, the art of the uh, the art of the perfect hit is the, is a trademark of the shadows. Whilst the Kite Thorn will ambush and bludgeon an enemy uh, quite rapidly, and the Black Lotus will make a man disappear, the shadows will consider this to be, quite frankly, distasteful. They have developed a reputation for excellence and for practicing techniques that end lives with the minimal minimal amount of pain, leading many of their assassins to be known as Sandmen. For the, sheer, for the sheer amount of targets that have slipped away peacefully in their sleep after a contract has been taken out upon their heads by the Shadows. The other strength of the Shadows is secrecy. No one actually knows the identity of the benefactor who rebuilt the city and leads this guild, if, if it indeed is a man at all. Misinformation is a nod that the Shadows uh, are, master, are masters at, and if anyone asks within the city a question about them, People usually fall silent. Their agents have gi are given vials of poppy sleep to drink if they are ever caught. As if they make it into custody, they will be found and given the they will be found and given the poppies flood in the poppies flood instead. The former poison uh, an, ex an, an instant painless death upon ingestion, whilst the latter causes all blood in one's body to rise to one's head and stay there, leading to an excruciating death. They have so many informants and agents, especially in the West, that it is almost certain that they will find an, uh, an agent who has gone rogue. The only name pinned to the leader of the Shadows is the Black Hand, and that he or she is the puppet master holding the hand of death over the prosperous and happy city. The Shadows are, are capable warriors in most forms of combat. Their main speciality, however, seems to be with advanced crossbows and blades. Both are incredibly efficient at delivering poisons, and are easy to forge and come across all, although some say that these were the weapons of their founder. The Shadows have recently moved some agents to the city of Letharin in the east, which is on the... Uh, but basically what Kale's Town is to Valenreath, Letharin is to uh, Menshai. You know, it looks at Keldanian. It's the, it's the westernmost city of, of the east. Uh, the Shadows have recently moved some of their agents to the city of Letharin in the east, the city of Thieves, and it is thought that their agents are fighting a terrible, terrible battle known as the Shadow War with the Black Lotus, there for control of the city. As the largest trading port in between Keldanian and the east, it is, it is a war fought with secret and death, the currency of this trade. So, those are the three main ones in the world. Uh, there are others, there are other guilds. Um, the Shadows were actually founded by a, a character from our very first um, Ventia campaign, which is which was not online, which no one will see, unfortunately. Um, and you know, because the Ventia campaign has uh, almost a, a folklore status amongst my friends, amongst the people who played in it, as you know, the perfect campaign. You know, it, it was thirty sessions of awesomeness basically <laughs> um, and it's something that I've been trying to capture with, with Saga ever since I mean Skybreaker was good and I think uh, Asunda definitely has all of the hallmarks of being another Ventia which is going to be great uh, but a character from that actually went on after after Ventia was finished and uh, founded the Shadows uh, because at the end of the campaign, obviously the dragon, a dragon showed up that had been hounding the party for quite a while, and destroyed the city that they were fighting over. And one of our evil party members, who turned on the rest, managed to escape with a boat and a fleet. Um, as the dragon flew off, so the dragon went and destroyed Kale's town, and then he landed there a couple of days later and began rebuilding. Um, so yeah, they kind of, uh, the. There's a three different types of assassins, you know, they are different, they have different styles. 
Uh, the, the, the Black Lotus probably the purest assassins of the bunch, and that they can basically do what the other two, um, what the other two societies do, assassin societies do, but a bit less, you know, and not not as well. They're not really trained for that sort of thing, but what they are trained for, the Black the Black Lotus, is uh, being um, completely ruthless and able to kill with blades up front and any sort of weapon. They are utterly deadly. They are walking weapons, and they are amazing at stealth. They are absolutely fantastic at not being seen. Um, poison isn't really their thing. They like it down and dirty. The Black Lotus, you know, they are martial artists. At the end of the day, they have pride. Uh, they are artists. Uh, the Kind Thorn, on the other hand, are thugs. Um, very skilled thugs, uh, but thugs nonetheless. Um, and you know, they will. They have no. Comp they have, uh, I, I describe them as like a pack of wolves. You know. They have no compunction of working with others or on their own. Um, they will do whatever it takes to take down a target. Uh, they are a nasty bunch of people, but they're assassins, you know, and they do what they're paid to do. Whereas the shadows are basically the snipers of the world. These are people who are trained to kill very, 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 very quickly um, from far away. Uh, they're, they're, they're skilled with blades, but they're more skilled with throwing blades than they are actually fighting with them. Um, and they are crack shots with bows and crossbows. So the, you know, as I said, these are people who, who always look for the headshot. These are people who are paid to deliver a swift and painless death. And they are, they actually, to me, they resemble a corporation, you know, like a mafia who have taken over Kale's Town underneath the surface, you know. Um, so those are three different types of assassins, and assassins come in, as I said, in all shapes and sizes. Um, and yeah, that's about him, really. That's really all I had to say about assassins. Um, they are here in Saga. They are available to hire if you know the right people. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. That is pretty much it, all I had to say. So next time we'll be going over religions, which will be a much longer video, uh, much much denser, I'm afraid. But this has been the Assassins. I've been Dean, GM Dean, Games Master of uh, World of Saga 3, Asunda, and creator of the World of Saga. Signing off for now, and I'll speak to you guys a little bit later on. See ya.